Hello again, this is Angie Summer with The Scripture Life. Um, welcome back to Monday Milk and Meat. We are in a new series and we are learning how to pray according to the Word of God. I hope that you joined me last week and um, for the beginning of it all. And we're going to continue this week. And um, I pray that you've had a blessed weekend and are starting the week out right. And we're starting it out in the Word of God. So um, like uh, this channel and subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications of any new videos that we have. Um, leaders are very thankful for um, the ability and the technology to share the Word of God with you and come right into your home or in your car or wherever you're at today. So um, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. I hope you've got your Bible. Grab your Bible and um, uh, we want you to read it with us. Um, you know, as, as me and uh, my scripture sisters are teaching the Word of God and, and, um, and sharing the messages that we feel that needed to be spoken across the airwaves, um, we want you to join with us. We don't want to just be you listening to us read. Um, the, the idea behind the scripture life is all about you and I getting into our Word and reading it for ourselves. And that's what we are here to do, is encourage you to help you do that. And so um, so anyway, I hope that you've got your Bible with you today. And uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer this morning, um, or afternoon, or whatever time of day it is when you watch this. Father, we thank you. Father, I just magnify you, Lord. And first of all, I thank you that I can even call you Father. Only through the Son, only through your Son and his blood that has redeemed me back into right relationship with you. God, I honor you today and I praise you and thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you that this is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you, Lord, that um, we have the word of God, that we can read in our own language, that we can understand, God, what you have to teach us and what we can learn about who you are. Lord, I pray today that you would um, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what thus saith the Lord today, through your word, through the scriptures, Lord. Lord, you said in your word that if anyone lacks wisdom, that they would ask of you to give it and that you would give it to us freely. So we are asking for wisdom today, God, as we study your word. Help us to know how to pray. And I give you praise and I give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, last week we started off. Uh, go ahead and turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Uh, we, are, we are learning how to pray as Jesus taught us how to pray. Um, we know that Jesus went away to pray many times to the Father. And we want to follow his example. So we started out by learning we can address God as Father and um, that he is our heavenly father who lives in heaven but uh, we address him when we pray that is who we are speaking to and so we are learning who we speak to when we pray and who we talk to and we believe that god is and he exists so today we're going to finish out verse 9 and we're going to finish the last part of that verse so let's read together matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 and jesus is speaking Pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. So we are going to talk about the last part today. Hallowed be your name. Now, hallowed or hallowed comes from the word hallow, H-A-L-L-O-W. And um, from the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, um, it means to make or set apart as holy or to respect or honor greatly or revere. From the Century Dictionary, it means to mark or set apart as holy, to consecrate to holy or religious use, to keep sacred, to regard or treat as holy, reverence, adore, hold in solemn honor. Now, what does holy mean? We, we heard holy in both of those definitions. And the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines holy as exalted 
or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. So set apart, right, is to set away from maybe everything else, set apart as holy, sacred, perfect, righteous. Now the Greek word for hallowed is hagazio, and it means to make holy, consecrate, and sanctify, which again kind of goes along with our English language. So, um, and when I looked this up in the Strong's Concordance, hagazio uh, means to regard as special or sacred or holy, set apart, right? The same words we were talking about before, sanctified. And um, it means to make holy, consecrate, sanctify, dedicate, separate, okay? There's a distinct separation. This name is to be separate from all others, to be regarded as different than all the others. And hagazio comes from a root word, hagaios, hagios, H-A-G-I-O-S. Now that means properly different, unlike others or other, otherness, holy. For the believer, hagios means likeness of nature with the Lord because different from the world. Different from the world. Okay, set apart, different from anything else like it. The fundamental core meaning of hagios is different. Thus, a temple in the first century was hagios, holy, because it was different from all the other buildings. In the New Testament, hagios, or holy, has the technical meaning different from the world because like the Lord. So it is like the Lord, so it is not like the world. It is different. The Greek word is used in other scriptures as sanctify. Okay, this same word is used in other scripture references in the New Testament as sanctify. And what does sanctify mean? The, new, the Century Dictionary defines it as to consecrate, set apart from a common to a sacred use, hallow, right, to render sacred, to invest with sacred or elevated character, so we are exalting and setting this name above everything else that is common. Okay, so all of those, I wanted you to understand, that's why I defined each one because they kind of all were used in the definitions together, right? So we need to you think of hallowed be thy name means it is different than everything else. It is set apart from everything else. From, you know, in, in our world, we live here on planet Earth, so in the world's perspective, we separate God's name from everything here. It is higher. It is to be elevated and honored and respected more than anything else. It's very different, different from the world, you know, as that other um, definition was. That's why they, they, they called the, the, the place where he was, the temple was holy because it was unlike any other building. You know, our church building should be different than any other building. It shouldn't resemble another building that's in the world. You know, nowadays, sadly, um, some churches have tried to make their buildings re resemble other buildings in the world, like um, concert halls and um, even nightclubs. And they've tried to make it common. When God said, wherever he is, is supposed to be holy. It's supposed to be different. It should be different. If his name is on something, it doesn't look like the world. It's actually different from. It's it's totally opposite from. It, he's set apart from that. So I wanted to lay groundwork on the definition of hallow so that you understand what this is meaning. Um, while God might be our father, right? We, we established that. We are addressing Father God. He is, should still be respected with the highest, utmost respect, more than any man or anything 
that we can even try to uh, compare as humans on planet Earth. His name should be regarded as sacred. And it's not like any other name. He is supreme. He is the only God. He, he alone rules. Okay. And, and he's to be feared as much as all of those. Now, we are to hallow his name. We are to set it apart from every other name. Um, now, the scriptures tell us his name is holy. Okay. Um, let's, let's look real quick in the word because that's the scripture life. We get in the word and we prove everything by the word. So let's look at Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. And we're going to go to verse 3. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 3. I will also set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he has given some of his children to Molech so as to defile my sanctuary, tabernacle or his house, so as to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Now God himself is declaring his name is holy. And it should not be mixed with any other kind of worship. Even there, he was he was um, really coming across with some judging words and condemning people for trying to defile his name and use what is what is assigned to him in his name for for the profane for idol idolatry. He does not deal well with that. So we got to make sure that his name is revered as holy. Now look over to um, chapter 22, Leviticus 22 and verse 2. This is the Lord speaking to Moses. <clears throat> Say to them, any man among all your descendants throughout your generations who approaches the holy gifts, which the sons of Israel consecrate to the Lord, while he has an uncleanness, that person shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. He is so specific about his name and who he is or anything that he is called or deemed uh, holy that you need to make sure nothing comes near God because he alone is holy. Look at verse um, 32. Verse 32. And you shall not profane my holy name, but I will be sanctified among the sons of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you, who brought you out from the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. You know, he's saying, you will not profane my holy name. It is a holy name. Now, First Chronicles, I'm going to go there. First Chronicles 16. First Chronicles 16 and verse 10. Boast in his holy name and let the heart of those who seek the Lord be joyful. Okay, his name is holy. Verse 35 of that same chapter. Then say, save us, God of our salvation, and gather us and save us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Okay, again, his name is holy. His name is set apart. That's what that's meaning every time we read that. All right, let's go to chapter 29 of First Chronicles and verse 16. 29 and verse 16. Hallelujah. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided to build you a house for your holy name, it is from your hand and everything is yours. So they were building the house of God for his holy name. Okay. Um, look at Psalm 30. 
Psalm 30. His name is holy. His name is holy. We got to remember and keep his name separate from every other name. 30 and verse 4. Sing praise to the Lord, you his godly ones, and praise the mention of his holiness. He's holy. He's holy. 33 and 21. 33 and 21. For our heart rejoices in him because we trust in his holy name. Hallelujah. I trust in your holy name, God. Your name is holy. Psalm 97. Skip over to 97. And we're going to go verse 12. 97 and verse 12. Be joyful in the Lord, you righteous ones, and praise the mention of his holy name. The mention of his holy name. Hallelujah. 99 in verse 3. May they praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Holy, different, not like anything else not like anyone else, far above and higher. Hallelujah. 103, 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, his holy set-apart name. Hallelujah. Chapter 106 and verse 47. Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Hallelujah, your name is holy. 111, chapter 111, and verse 9. He sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever, holy and awesome is his name. Hallelujah. Holy and awesome is your name, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Look at chapter 145. Psalm 145 and verse 21. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. All flesh Hallelujah. Why? Because it is set apart. It is different from the world. It is not of the world or not even like the world. Hallelujah. It is holy. It is sacred. It is elevated high above all else. Isaiah chapter 47. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that your name is holy and set apart. I thank you that it is not like anybody else. Thank you, Lord. 47, 47, and, and, and verse 4. Our Redeemer, the Lord of armies, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Thank you, Lord, you're holy. Chapter 54 of Isaiah, 54, and verse 5. For your husband is your maker, whose name is is the Lord of armies, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth. Thank you, Lord, that you're holy, that you are not like everybody else. Hallelujah. Chapter 57 of Isaiah and verse 15. 57 verse 15. For this is what the high and exalted one, come on, he is above everything else and everyone else who lives forever, whose name is holy, says, I dwell in a high and holy place and also with the contrite and lowly of spirit in order to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Hallelujah. He is holy. His name is holy and he is high, and he dwells in a holy high place. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ezekiel 36. 
Thank you, Lord, that you are set apart, that you are not like everything else or anyone else. Thank you, Lord. 36, verse 20. Thank you, Lord. When they came to the nations where they went, they profaned my holy name because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they have left his land. Look at verse 21. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations where they went. He is concerned about his holy name being profaned. Warning. That's a warning to us. We better not profane his holy name. It is holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 7. 39 and verse 7. And I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not allow my holy name to be profaned anymore. But the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Hallelujah. Behold, verse 8, it is coming. And it shall be done, declares the Lord God. That is the day of which I have spoken. Thank you, Lord. He is holy. He is holy. And his name will not be profaned. Hallelujah. Look at verse 25 of that same chapter. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob and have mercy on all the house of Israel. And I will be jealous for my holy name. Hallelujah. Let's keep it holy, people. Let's keep it holy. Thank you, Lord. Uh, look at verse, in chapter 43 and verse 7. Chapter 43 and verse 7. And he said to me, son of man, this, is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell among the sons of Israel forever and the house of Israel will not again defile my holy name. Neither they nor their kings by their prostitution and by their, the corpses of their kings when they die by putting their threshold of my thre by my threshold and their doorposts beside my doorposts with only the wall between me and them. They have defiled my holy name by their abominations where they have committed. So I will consume, I have consumed them in my anger. No one will profane God's holy name and not receive judgment. God is very serious about his name, being kept holy and being revered and feared. Daniel chapter four. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 8. But finally Daniel came in to before me, whose name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is a spirit of the holy God. Hallelujah. Even Daniel was recognized of having the spirit of the holy God. You know, that was the difference. There were pagan gods, lying demons, pretending to be little g-o-d-s's, trying to put themselves and elevate their names, but there's no name like the name of the holy God. None. Look at Amos chapter 2. We're going to go to Amos chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amos chapter 2 and verse 7. These who trample the head of the helpless to the dust of the earth also divert the way of the humble. And a man and his father resort to the same girl so as to profane my holy name. We need to be very careful. We can profane his name by even indulging in abominations and sin. If we wear his name, we better not partake in anything that will profane or defile his name. Hallelujah. Look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. 
Hallelujah. 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 Your name is holy. Your name is holy. Luke 1, verse 49. Now, this is Mary's song after an angel visited her and told her that she was going to have the Christ child. And she is uh, worshiping the Lord. I want you to, we're going to back up to verse 46 because I want you to, uh, want you to get the, con uh, the context of this. And Mary said, my soul exalts the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has had regard for the humble state of his bond servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name in her worship she is declaring holy is his name holy is my god's name that should be our worship our worship better declare the holiness of his name our worship and our song should not be about us it should be about our holiness of our god the worthiness of his name hallelujah thank you lord Look at John chapter 17, John chapter 17 and verse 11. Hallelujah, Lord. This is Jesus in a prayer. He's praying to his father. He says, I am no longer going to be in the world and yet they themselves are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name of which you have given me so that they may be one just as we are. Holy is the Father in heaven. Jesus has even declared it as such right there. And look at Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15 and verse 4. Hallelujah. Now, you know what? I'm going to back up to verse 3 because I want to show you something. I had a revelation of this. Um, you know, that when we, when we read things and we ask for wisdom, the Lord will show us through his word. He will do it every time. And he's going to reveal to you through his word what it means and understanding. I want, you to read, I want you to read this with me. This is part of just all of the revelation, right, that God is, uh, that Christ has given to um, John about how, Jesus is coming back, which is an amazing, amazing thing. And if you would like more on that, we actually did um, uh, the Scripture Spoken series on the book of Revelation. I encourage you to go back and watch that. But um, verse 3 of chapter 15 says, And they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant in God, of God, and the song of the Lamb. Now, saying, now this is their song, okay? And whose song was this? So Moses sang this song. And the lamb sang the song. Jesus sang this song. And Moses sang this song. Okay? I, I just want you to make, be clear about it. That this is the song that they sang. Okay? Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. Now, did you know Jesus sang a song to the Father? A song of worship? Well, he did. It's right here. Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. And he sang it with Moses. They both sang the same song. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. You alone are holy. Even Jesus sang, you alone, Father God, are holy. We are to do the same. Hallelujah. So, what is his name? Now, we know the name of the son, right? We know his son's name. is It was revealed in the New Testament 
and when he came to be born of a virgin and he revealed his name as Jesus or Emmanuel, God with us, the anointed one, the Christ who, who came to redeem. So what is the name of Father God? Now, I know we are already probably at a, a 30 minute mark or close to, um, but I feel that this is so important. The Lord was showing me this. I was praying about this uh, because I said, Lord, I, I don't want to misunderstand. I want to understand. I want all of us to fully understand. We know that you are a triune God. You are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, as we say sometimes. So um, I, I wanted to be clear because Jesus prayed to the Father and Jesus knows his own Father's name right? And we know the son's name. It's been revealed. So I, I wanted to get clarity on that. And he actually had confirmation. Thank you, Lord, uh, by a phone call by uh, my one of my cousins. So uh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Uh, now, if you go back to Genesis 1-1, Genesis 1-1, Thank you, Lord, that your name is set apart and holy. Uh, I want you to look right here with me. Now, remember that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and the New Testament is in Greek, okay? So our translations, you know, I know we've got people that have been inspired of God when they translated this uh, from the original that tried to be as closest as we could get it. Because sometimes in languages, there, there is things that are not interpreted correctly. So um, I, I just want to give a little uh, note to you. While you are doing study of the scripture, I really encourage you to, um, and like I said, I, I do it online now. I used to pull out my Strong's Concordance, which is about this thick, um, just to make sure. Because a Strong's Concordance... Um, has a um, every word rendering according to Greek and Hebrew. And um, now with technology and all of our internet and stuff and all of these, uh, I know Bible Gateway, Bible Hub, all of these different um, places that we can go to, you can look up a verse and you can find it in the original language and it breaks down each word and it'll show you a link and it will you can are able to follow. That's how I even... Uh, did that with hallowed, you know, you can find out what it, it, what's the connotation here, you know, our English language is not as deep as, as the Hebrew. There was so much rich meaning. So I encourage you to do that when you study the word of God, you know? Um, so anyway, when, when you read this in, in verse one, in the beginning, God, capital G O D is what our English translation says, created the heavens and the earth. Now, the Hebrew word God there is Elohim, okay? Now, when that was put there, it was an Elohim. That, that's what they said, and that means God. That's what Elohim means is God. So that's why our version says God. And um, in Genesis 2, in verse 4, there's a difference, okay? It, it says, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God had made heaven and earth. Now there, there's Lord, and usually like mine has, you know, there's there's lowercase caps, you know, small caps, Lord. And so that word um, is the Hebrew uh, Yahweh, or uh, the Jewish sometimes say Adonai. And um, now I, at first I was like, wait a minute, I, I didn't realize that Yahweh was already here. So, um, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute because I, I discovered something different. Um, so, um, in, in the World English Bible, which um, it's, it's a new, it's a, a literal translation from the Greek and Hebrew. They took the, it's Greek and they kind of had to add in parentheses our prepositional phrase, phrases uh, for us to make sense of it. But, he, but the author took the literal word for word. And... Um, uh, in the World English Bible, Genesis 2, 4 says, This is the history of the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh, 
and, and it has a note. Yahweh is God's proper name, sometimes rendered Lord, all caps, in other translations. So um, just, um, I'm going to kind of go into some detail about why it's there first. Um, because it wasn't until Exodus chapter 3. I want you to look with me in Exodus chapter 3. Now remember, uh, I don't know if you know yet or not, but the first, um, the first, I believe it's five books, Genesis, S, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, first five books were written by Moses. Okay. Um, God had him to write the history. Okay inspired by God. So knowing that, that, that he's pinning this, you know, um, uh, so, so he is the one we're about to read that God revealed his name to. Okay. Um, I want you to look with me in chapter three. Uh, we're going to go, we're just going to read, um, we're going to just start on verse one because I, I want you to understand. We're, that's why uh, Monday Milk and Meat, um, I, I believe I started that because the Lord wants to build on foundations. And we, we want to make sure that we have understanding in all things. So um, we're going to take some time and read. So we're going to read in Exodus 3, and I'm reading in the New American Standard Bible. Now Moses was pasturing the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Interesting, right? It was called the mountain of God. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, and yet the bush was not being consumed. And Moses said, I must turn aside and see this marvelous sight. Why is the bush not burning up? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look at it, God called to him from the middle or the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And then he said, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet. For the place on which you stand is holy ground, because he's a holy God. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I've certainly seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their outcry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. He's always aware of what's going on with our lives. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Pez per Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. And now, behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. And now come, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people and the sons, of, the sons of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Assuredly, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, This is what you shall say to the sons of Israel. I am, all caps, has sent me to you. Now, um, I don't know about in what, what you're reading, but I am who I am is all caps. And there is a notation that it says, this actually was four letters, Y, H, and W, H. And um, it actually is derived from um, a different, like the Hebrew name that I, I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna share with you, um, this is an article written by, her name is Sherry Abbott, and it was on the website reasonsforhopejesus.com. And I just want to share with you because I thought she explained this so well. 
This is what she says, and I quote, This name was not given to man until God made it known to Moses at the burning bush, which is which we would just read. Jehovah Yahweh was a name unknown to Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the others prior to the time recorded when God called Moses. At that time, God began to reveal himself in a new and more personal and intimate way. At the burning bush, Moses was invited to stand on holy ground. He was no longer standing on a place of the world, but on a place that was sanctified. Remember, we talked about holy, set apart because of God's presence. And God said in verse six, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Still here, we only have the title Elohim, God. Moses responded and asked in verse, uh, thir in verse 13, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, they will say to me, What is his name? And what shall I say to him? And God answered, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. What Moses heard in Hebrew is, Eye. Asher Eye. We translate Eye in English as I am. It's spelled Haya in Strong's Dictionary and in an older form is Ewe. I am is the English translation of the Hebrew word Ewe. In the Hebrew language, Ewe has every tense of the verb to be. Okay? It can be translated like this. I was, I am, and I shall be. Okay, so do you see, I was explaining to you before how English language, um, you know, was, am, we, 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 we say they're different, right? We say to be, the, we conjugate that, which English lesson here, right? I am, I was, I, I am, I will be. You know, there's three tenses to that. But the Hebrew is all encompassed, okay? So this I am means I was, I am, I will be. Okay? Amazing, right? Therefore, we can understand it to mean that God was conveying to Moses, I shall always be the eternally existent, hallelujah, unchanging God. It's so incredible. My whole life, you know, I've heard that, that he's the I am, the great I am, the am, I am that I am. But to know the level of what he was meaning here, I am eternally existent. I will always be, is what he was saying. So Moses, I'm still quoting, would have heard, I was that I was, I am that I am, and I will be that I will be. God was saying, whatever it is that I was, I was that. I was creator. I was a covenant maker. Whatever it is that I am, I am that, the one who is calling you, the one who is with you. And whatever it is that I will be, I will be that, the one who will fulfill his promises, the one who will never change. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Look at the levels of the deepness of I am. Thank you, Lord. Ea, Ewe is a word that conveys time from eternity past to eternity future. When, when we read I am as the name of God, it reveals he, his eternality. It also reveals his attribute of faithfulness and his immutable, unchangeable nature. Ea, Ewa, I'm not even saying that right, I'm sorry. Ea, Ewe, tells who he was, who he is, and who he will be forever. And it reminds us that all of God's attributes are eternal. His holiness, his love, his grace, his mercy, his truth, his faithfulness and justice is eternal. He is these things. In contrast, we are only sometimes these things, right? I can sometimes be merciful. I can sometimes be faithful, but he will always be. He will always be forever, forever. Woo, hallelujah. Back to Exodus 3 in the burning bush. When Moses asked God, what name should he give to the children of Israel to tell them 
who had sent them. In Exodus 3 and 13, God first said that his name is Iye Asher Iye, or Iwe Asher Iwe, I am that I am. But then God gave Moses a different name to tell the children of Israel. In verse 15, and God said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord Yahweh, or Jehovah, Y-H-W-H, God Elohim of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, who hath sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Now this now raises the question, why did God say his name is Iwe in Exodus 3.14, and yet Moses was to use the name Yahweh when speaking to the children of Israel. And God said, moreover unto Moses, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, the Lord, which is Yahweh, the capital L-O-R-D in our English language is Yahweh. God, Elohim in Hebrew, has sent me to you, and this is my name forever. Iwe, Iye, or Iwe, also spelled E-H-Y-E-H, and Yahweh, both designate the eternality and immutability of our God. And when God said, Iye, he was speaking his own name, speaking in first person. When he gave Moses his name to speak to the children of Israel, he gave Moses the name in the third person. Why? Because if Moses had said, Iwe has sent me to you, he would have been speaking in the first person and claiming eternality for himself, which Moses is not. Iwe is I was, I am, and I will be. Yahweh is he was, he is, and he will always be. You see the difference? So Moses had said Yahweh, he who was, is, and will always will be, translated capital L-O-R-D, Elohim, translated God, has sent me to you. Only God can say a way about himself. So that I thought was an amazing explanation about the differences there that were, that were um, in the word of God. Now, I want you to look at Exodus 6 and verse 2. And we're going to read um, 2 through 8. God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, which is Y-H-W-H, -H, Yahweh. And I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Yahweh, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as strangers. Furthermore, I have heard the groaning of the sons of Israel because the Egyptians are holding them in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the labors of the Egyptians and I will rescue you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with a, an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And then I will take you to be my people and you, I will be your God and you shall know that I am the Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out from under the labors of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and I will give it to you as a possession. I am Yahweh. I love that. He revealed his name as the eternal one, forever the eternal one. Uh, look over at Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16. And verse 21. Therefore, behold, I am going to make them know. This time I will make them know my power and my might. And they will know that my name is Yahweh. Or Y-H-W-H. -H, okay? He was going to make known his name. Hallelujah. Now, he told Moses his name was not ever to be 
used in vain or misused or disrespected. It's one of the Ten Commandments. And, and remember we read earlier about he will not have his name profaned, right? Um, look with me in Exodus 20. Exodus 20. And verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, which we said was what? Yahweh. Your God in vain. And vain means like worthless or, or use it um, not, not respecting it wholly, basically. Um, you will not take it, that name and use it without using it in holiness. For the Lord will not leave himself, leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. He's, like I said before, he's very careful and he's very um, cognizant of how we use his name. And he will not allow his name to be profaned or defiled. Um, look in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 11. And again, he's going over the Ten Commandments and he says to them, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Um, his name, his name is to be revered. His name is to be kept holy. Holy, holy, holy. Now, look in uh, Deuteronomy 6.13. I want you to look in Deuteronomy 6.13. You shall fear only the Lord your God and you shall worship him and swear by his name. We are to fear God and to fear his name. In other words, fearing meaning keep it sacred, keep it holy, keep it separate. Reverence. When we reverence something, we, we, um, we set it apart. We treat it with respect. We treat it as um, holy and different. You know, the only thing I can think that comes to mind is like um, maybe when you have gotten an award or, or maybe it's your diploma or, or maybe it's your college degree. You know, you set that thing, you frame it, you set it aside and it's there to as, a, as an honor, right? It, it's something that we honor. We should put God's name in such honor that we are so careful to keep it holy and separate from everything else. Even when we use the name, we have to be careful and cautious about it. Uh, look in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter eight. Isaiah chapter eight, verse 12. You are not to say it is a conspiracy regarding everything that this people call in a conspiracy. And you're not to fear what they fear or be in dread of it. It is the Lord of armies whom you are to regard as holy. And he shall be your fear and he shall be your dread. That's a good word for actually what's going on in 2020, 2021. I'll just leave it at that. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. It's of him speaking to us. All right, flip over to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29 and verse 23. But when he sees his children, the work of his hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name. They will make my name holy. Indeed, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and they will stand in awe of the God of Israel. He wants to be in awe. He wants us to be just almost speechless about who he is and his name. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. So they will fear the name of the Lord, all caps there, which means Yahweh, from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And he shall come, he will come like a rushing stream, which the wind of, of the Lord drives. They will fear. He causes and does things so that we will fear and reverence his holy name, holy. He alone is God. And we need to put that respect on his name. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let's look at Malachi. 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 
Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi 1 and verse 14. But cursed be the swindler who has a male in his flock and vows it, but sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord of armies, and my name is feared among the nations. I believe he will make his name feared again. I'm praying that he shows himself mighty in these days we are living so that people will once again fear him as the only God, as the only one, as the only true God and bring reverence back to his name. Uh, I can only speak for America and maybe for just Texas, but I believe his name has been misused way too much. And I believe it's time for those who carry his name to stand up and call it out. And we will not have the name of our God misused anymore. Oh, thank you, Father. Okay, look at chapter 2 and verse 4. Then you will know that I have sent this commandment to you so that my covenant may continue with Levi, says the Lord of the armies. My covenant with him was one of life and peace, and I gave them to him as an object of reverence. So he revered me and was in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and justice and he turned many back from wrongdoing. You know, we need to make sure that we, we keep reverence. He revered me and was in awe of my name. That's what we should be doing. We revere him and be in awe of his name, which it should make you, it should already, like my mind was so blown reading the fact that when he said, I am that I am, it meant that I was, I am, I will always be forever. Forever, forever, ever, and ever, ever, ever. It's just an incredible revelation to 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 know that what, what he meant when you're just saying I am the depth of that. Woo! For all eternity, past, present, and future, forever. Um, look at three and verse sixteen. Malachi three verse sixteen. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened attentively. And heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and esteem his name. Esteem his name. Sanctify, set it apart, lift it up higher than any other name. That, that is what we should be doing. Look at 4 and verse 2. But for you who fear my name, look at this. The sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and frolic like calves from the stall. I went rejoicing and dancing. Because those who fear his name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. That is a promise for us who fear his name. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew 10, 28. We're gonna click right along here. Matthew 10, 28. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body. This is Jesus speaking. But are unable to kill the soul but rather fear him, Father, Holy God, who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. We are to fear and fear his name. Um, look at 2 Corinthians 7. 2 Corinthians 7. And verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, Let's cleanse ourselves from all the defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Come on. We got to fear God and reverence his name and know when we speak to Father in heaven, hallowed, holy, I lift your name high above all else. There is no other name but your name. You alone are God. Hallelujah. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22. Slaves, obey those who are your human masters in everything. Or it could be employees and obey your employers. Not with eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. 
fearing the Lord. In Revelation 14, 7, Verse 6, let's back up to verse 14, 6. And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven with an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation, tribe, language, and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of waters. Fear God and give him glory Hallelujah. He is the one we are to fear. He is the one we are to revere. He who was and is and will always be that I am that I am. Yahweh. Let's remember to keep God's name holy, reverenced, set apart. If we would get just a glimpse of who he is, we would always address him in prayer with awe, with respect, with reverence, a holy fear, and, and never be flippant even about when we pray. You know, I, I, I correct my kids sometimes. I think mainly at, at dinner, you know, we, might, we go around and we have our children take turns praying over the dinner. And sometimes they would just be like, dear God, thank you for this food. And I just would stop them and I said, wait a minute. Do you know who you're speaking to? Because if you knew who you were speaking to, you wouldn't speak like that. You would say, dear Father in heaven, I am in awe of who you are. I fear and reverence your holy name above all other else. And I bring my petition before you in reverence of who you are. May we all be more careful about who we are addressing and making sure that we give the reverence, that we set apart, that we elevate, that we highly esteem, that we sanctify and and, and, and speak to him different than anyone else. His name should be treated with the utmost respect. So let's keep Yahweh's name holy. Let's keep him holy. Amen? Amen. Well, I hope that you had some revelation today. And, and I, I, I pray that the Lord used me to try to show you the depth and the power of, of who he is and his name and why we should reverence it and keep it holy and, and separate. And next time you pray, let's remember to be in awe of who he is. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, let's, let's keep on keeping on. Let's stay in the word and let's walk the scripture life by faith and not by sight. And let's just always be um, mindful of, of who we are, who we belong to, and who our daddy really is. Amen. You have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.